With every heartbeat, the heart creates a wave or pulse that's sent to arteries all over the body in order to deliver oxygenated blood to our organs and tissues. As a healthcare professional, you need to be able to obtain a pulse and determine its characteristics, including the pulse rate, rhythm, and amplitude. You can calculate the pulse rate by counting the number of pulsations felt over an artery in one minute. This should be equal to the heart rate or the number of times the heart beats per minute. The normal pulse rate varies among different age groups and individual patients. So for adults and adolescents 12 years of age or older, the awake rate is typically between 60 and 100. For school-aged children between 6 and 12, it's 75 to 118. For preschoolers from 3 to 5, it's 80 to 120. Toddlers aged 1 and 2 years old have a normal pulse rate of 98 to 140. Finally, infants under 1 year of age normally have the fastest pulse rate, which ranges from 100 to 180 beats per minute. Enjoying our Osmosis videos? Unlock your full potential with an Osmosis subscription. Get unlimited access to every Osmosis feature and resource with a free seven-day trial. Besides age, the pulse rate can also be influenced by many factors, including sleep, physical activity, body temperature, emotions like anger, fear, or stress, medications, or even the weather. So tachycardia is when the pulse rate is faster than the normal range, or over 100 beats per minute for an adult. Tachycardia can occur in response to factors like strenuous exercise, fever, pain, anxiety, or certain medications. In contrast, bradycardia means that the pulse rate is too slow, or less than 60 beats per minute for an adult, and can be due to heart problems or various medications. Another important characteristic is the pulse rhythm, which is normally regular, meaning that the intervals between the beats are equal. In an irregular rhythm, the beats don't follow an even tempo, and some of them might even be skipped. It's also useful to note whether the irregularity happens in a predictable way or unpredictable way. A predictable or regularly irregular pulse is one that follows the same pattern every time. An example of this is sinus arrhythmia, which is a benign finding where the heart rate increases in rate on inspiration and decreases in rate on expiration. If, on the other hand, the pulse is irregular in an unpredictable pattern, it's called an irregularly irregular rhythm and can be the result of a heart problem such as atrial fibrillation. Pulse amplitude, or force, refers to how strong or full the pulse is and reflects the amount of blood that's pushed against the arterial wall with each heartbeat. A weak, thready, or feeble pulse is typically considered an emergency and could be an indication of low blood volume, like when a patient is bleeding excessively, or a serious heart problem leading to poor perfusion, like a blockage of one of the heart's arteries. In contrast, a bounding pulse refers to a pulse that's stronger than normal and indicates increased blood flow to the area. So in describing the amplitude, a pulse can be graded on a scale of 0 to 4 plus. Grade the pulse as 4 plus if you feel a bounding pulse against your fingertips. A 3 plus pulse is strong, full, and increased. A 2 plus pulse is considered normal. A 1 plus pulse is diminished and is often described as weak and thready and a pulse that's absent or not palpable is graded as zero. The pulse can be felt as a thumping sensation in arteries that are located near the skin's surface. This includes the radial, carotid, brachial, femoral, popliteal, posterior tibial, and dorsalis pedis arteries. Before taking your patient's pulse, it's important to consider how often the patient's pulse should be measured as well as the patient's previous pulse rate and measurement site. Then gather the supplies you'll need, including a watch with a second hand or a timer. Start by identifying your patient, informing them about the procedure, and answering any questions related to the procedure. Remember to also practice hand hygiene. Now the radial pulse is one of the most easily accessible pulse locations and is a satisfactory location for adults and children over two years of age. Start by assisting them into a comfortable position. If the patient is lying in a supine position, place their arm alongside their body. Then place your middle two or three fingers on the front of the wrist, just under the base of the thumb. 
That's where you'll be able to feel the radial artery. Make sure to not use your thumb because you can get confused with your own pulse. Be sure to apply firm but gentle pressure when palpating the pulse, taking care not to occlude the artery. In an emergency, or if the radial artery is not easily accessible, the carotid pulse can be obtained. First, check for obvious pulsations. Then, using your middle two or three fingers, gently palpate the left and then right artery between the larynx and the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Do not palpate both arteries at once and don't apply excessive pressure because that would reduce blood flow to the brain. Count the first beat you feel as one, the second beat as two, the third beat as three, and so on until you determine the number of beats that occur in 60 seconds. In a regular rhythm, it can be reasonable to count the beats in 30 seconds and multiply by two. However, if the rhythm isn't regular, you will need to count the number of beats in a full minute. A full minute of beats is also counted in children younger than 12 years old. Now check the other side to assess for symmetry. Both sides should be equal, which means both are receiving the same blood flow. When you're done, remember to practice hand hygiene. Now, if you're having trouble measuring the pulse, if you're caring for an infant or a patient with heart disease, or if the patient is taking medications that affect the pulse rate, the most reliable and accurate way to measure the pulse is to obtain an apical pulse. That's the pulse that's measured right over the heart using a stethoscope at a location called the Point of Maximal Impulse, or PMI for short. So first, gather the supplies you'll need, including a watch, alcohol wipes, and a stethoscope. Once again, identify your patient and inform them about the procedure before beginning, and answer any questions related to the procedure. Next, practice hand hygiene and use an alcohol wipe to clean off your stethoscope. After asking for permission, adjust the patient's clothing and use your fingers to identify anatomical landmarks that will help you locate the apical pulse. Find the apical pulse at the apex of the heart on the left side of the chest between the fifth and sixth ribs, also known as the fifth intercostal space, along the midclavicular line. That's usually just below the left nipple in people with minimal breast tissue or underneath the breast in those with more significant breast tissue. In a young child under the age of three, the location will be higher, usually around the fourth intercostal space and slightly medial to the midclavicular line. After identifying the correct location, place your stethoscope against the patient's apical pulse. You should now hear something that sounds like lub-dub, 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 which repeats over and over again. Each lub-dub is a heartbeat. Begin counting the heartbeats for one minute. Once you're done, take the stethoscope off the patient's chest, help them replace any clothing if needed, and assist them back into a comfortable position. Finally, wipe the stethoscope clean and practice hand hygiene. Normally, every time the heart beats, there's a pulse, so the apical pulse matches the one measured in the arteries. Sometimes, though, the heart beats irregularly, too quickly or too weakly, to send enough blood to the arteries, which is the reason why some heartbeats might be heard with a stethoscope placed on the apex, but not felt as a pulse in the arteries. This can be checked by having one healthcare worker assess the apical pulse with a stethoscope and another one measure the radial pulse at the same time for one minute. To find the pulse deficit, subtract the radial pulse from the apical pulse. As a healthcare professional, there are a few things you should look for when measuring the pulse, such as a pulse rate above or below normal or a value specific for the patient, an irregular pulse rhythm, a weak, thready, or feeble pulse, or an unusually strong bounding pulse. If you find an abnormal pulse, check the patient's chart to find out what their baseline pulse rate and rhythm is, and then recheck it at another site. Remember, when rechecking an abnormal pulse, be sure to count for a full 60 seconds. If the pulse is abnormal, check the patient for symptoms. Finally, remember to document the date, time, pulse rate, rhythm, and amplitude and any observations you made while measuring the patient's pulse. All right, as a quick recap, the pulse represents the throbbing sensation that's felt with each heartbeat over arteries near the surface of the body. It's characterized by a pulse rate, which is the number of pulses per minute, a pulse rhythm, which can be regular or irregular, and a pulse amplitude, 
which reflects the strength or fullness of the pulse. It's typically obtained by feeling the radial or the carotid artery. An apical pulse can be taken if these sites are not available, or the patient is an infant, has a heart condition, or takes medication that affects the heart. This is done by measuring the number of heartbeats heard with a stethoscope over the apex of the heart. If you find an abnormal pulse, take their pulse again for a full 60 seconds and check the patient for symptoms. Finally, remember to document the date, time, pulse rate, rhythm, and amplitude along with your observations. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.